with an absolutely brutal pullback in the last kind of few days, week or so. We have seen some excruciating pain. But I hope that by watching this channel, the Crypto Bliss channel, by me, Kiara Cass, and our beautiful community together, because you're part of it, that you would find that just being patient and forgetting the noise and forgetting all of the FUD that is out there and just continuing to buy these particular areas, you would see right now in your chart that Bitcoin is a currently in a ranging zone. It is not going anywhere. This is a range between this level, pretty much the 71K level, and this level over here, the 60K level. That's an $11,000 range, guys. That is absolutely massive. So on a day-to-day -day basis, if you're kind of going to see 16% volatile moves in Bitcoin, of course, you're going to see the altcoins bleed in and out, pump up and down, and kind of start to stabilize and find its way. Now, with that being said, thank you for being here. Welcome back to the Crypto Bliss Show. And I am Kiara, and I am ready to show you guys exactly what you need to be seeing. So make sure to stay tuned right to the very end, because you're not going to want to miss out. I have crazy, awesome videos to show you in this session. So this will be probably a little bit of a longer video today, but very much well worth it after not catching up with you guys for the last two, three days. Uh, you know, I was here with you on Monday night with my live session. If you guys are here with me on Monday nights for my live sessions. And uh, yeah, you guys can go ahead and check those out over there. Now, without any further ado, let's get to it, guys. Today, the cryptocurrency market cap is sitting at 24 billion a trillion dollars and currently the trading volume is 110 billion dollars and bitcoin is in the trending pattern here so is brett very very nice to see that okay now bitcoin is sitting at 63,456 at the moment at a 1.2 one and a quarter trillion dollar market cap ethereum is sub um 3100 tether's market cap has just literally printed 1.3 trillion dollars since my video that i did for you guys over here one point sorry 1.3 billion dollars so if you guys are not witnessing what is going on and you're not watching this okay do you guys think that this market cap is going to continue to shrink I, I i can't explain this to you but you you're misinformed and you should be absolutely subscribing to my channel so that you guys are getting the best alpha and content because even though I might be one of these dudes on the internet, etc., I am not just one of those dudes. I'm here, I'm doing it, I'm talking about it, I'm making money from it, I'm helping other people make money from it, and I'm helping you make money from it. So if I have helped you make money on the channel, make sure to smash the thumbs up on the video. The Fear and Greed Index today is sitting at 67, which is uh, pretty much one of the lowest that it's been. You know, we've had a little bit of a pump in the price action uh, yesterday. So of course, we're going to go up just ever so slightly. So that is a very beautiful energy here in the market cap. Now, today, the Morales money bubbles were bleeding like crazy in the altcoins because we're a red candle today. If we zoom in a little bit onto your eight hour and your four hour, uh, in fact, that eight hour was actually a very nice one that we could look at at this point. And guys, don't worry about all the squiggles in the charts, please. Just, um, you know, bear with me because you, if you guys have watched this video, I'll leave it up on the card for you guys. You guys will see why I've left that for you there. So as you can see, now this is very, very beautiful. Look how it bottomed off at my end here. And if I have to draw this for you, it did not break that. And I'm going to make that particular one absolutely extra thick so that you guys can see there. We did not break that and we created a higher low. And this tells me that we're bottoming out, especially because this is a railway candle. And this eight hour is engulfing this candle. However, the volume is uncertain. However, on another note, if we look at the MACD, you can see on the MACD that we're kind of getting a little bit more of, uh, let me open this here for you. On the MACD, we're kind of getting a little bit of less selling pressure and we're exhausted, which tells me that we're going to get a little bit of a momentum like this, which if we bring this, um, I mean, the last time we were this low was over here, guys. So 
if we're looking at that, we could potentially, as I said, be seeing another move from where we currently are back up to that 618.786 level on the Fibonacci. So, you know, this is what I'm saying. you got to just be patient in this market. The RSI, we're, we're ranging right now, guys. We've got a few days left until the halving. The halving is coming in, you know, by Saturday evening, Sunday morning. So, you know, there's probably nothing going to happen at that point of the halving. But post halving, within the next kind of few weeks to few months, very, very easily so, we will start to see the bull rally continue as we have forever seen in the Bitcoin cycle once it goes past the beautiful moment of our um, halving point. Now, the same thing is busy happening here on the altcoins, as you can see, and I'm showing you a bit of chart at the beginning just because I want to engage a little bit differently with you guys today. So same thing here. There's a wick pulled up right back above our levels, held nicely, finding some support here with a good, strong buy in altcoins, a little bit of a retest on this level, and this hopefully over the next kind of few days starts to get us to push that momentum back. But truthfully and honestly, if we fail to get it back, back up above the $700 billion level in the next few weeks, I would say, you know, this could look a little bit, start to look a little bit more bearish, which I'd, I'd be a little bit more cautious um, just looking at it. And if we do manage to get back up into this zone over here and we hold and maintain this range zone that we were in, this would technically have been a like an extended fake out and then pull back up into this zone. So I like that. And I think that's 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 what I'm kind of hoping for. It doesn't mean it's going to happen. None of us have a genie in a lamp that we are using. Now, I've been posting relatively frequently, but you guys can see, you know, it's been it's been quite busy around. But nonetheless, we still continue to do. My channel is growing on Twitter. I would appreciate it if you could go over there and subscribe. I'll leave the link down in the comments uh, below for you. That would be truly appreciated. Now, if you guys think that we have exploded and we are kind of like failing and 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 nowhere at this point well you know this is from crypto gel um in the netherlands bitcoin is playing out very similar to the 2014 2018 cycle if you have a look there's the all-time high you find a lot of resistance there's a knock a bump and a, and a sit down i think um as i showed you in this chart you know this could be so it's a bump it's a bump it's a bum. And could we start to kind of get our way out of there? Now, just remember that that chart there was on the weekly, right? So right now on the weekly, it's starting to look a little bit similar. If you see, we hit the bump, pull back, hit the bump, pull back harder. And now we're gathering that momentum possibly to make our way to break through the upside. So we could sit tight here for a few days. We could wick down. We could have whatever, some crazy stuff happen. But your job is to survive the halving and pre all time high chop fest. In other words, this chop fest here. And uh, the best will be yet to come because we have not yet had our rally and our explosion um, up through from, you know, to till sometime in 2025. So shout out to Crypto Gel. Um, now, here's another one from CryptoGel as well. Uh, the current price action compared to the price action around previous Bitcoin halving events, that these there are similarities and there were differences. Pretty sure the result will still be the same, higher price. Let's roll. I do agree here. Even if this is an ascending triangle, you can see we pumped, we pumped, uh, you know, up and down, up and down. We broke through here. This was the halving point. So it was a fake out to the bottom and then an absolute continue of uh, sorry, this is now. Uh, so we pumped here, pumped here, pumped here. This was the halving point in. So you see the halving point has come, you know, we made this high a little bit earlier, whereas here was where we broke that high. So it took longer after. So maybe now, kind of post halving, we get like a five month, up to a five month kind of chop, as he's saying, like a chop action, like chop suey action 
um, in, you know, this is just kind of 70, call it 75 to 60,000, uh, 65,000 range. You know, we could get a chop here. We could consolidate and get boring ass movements here for days. I mean, Jesus, guys, we'll be sweating making videos for you guys around this time because there'll be nothing to talk about. <laughs> but um, essentially, you know, the inevitable truth is that we just end up going up. So that's the same thing that will uh, unfold. And it's, yeah, that's what's going to happen. So Mr. Peter Schiff, you know, Peter Schiff is a very interesting man. He is he's, he's a super gold bug. He's a gold advocate. And I don't disagree, disagree with him, but I'd love to show you here and shout out to Crypto, Crypto Zombie. I love his videos. I love his content. I actually watch his videos every single day. Um, here he puts out a post here. And he says, Peter Schiff is seriously out here bragging about the fact that gold is 26% up from its previous all-time high 12.5 years ago. So there, and you see, so up 26.4%, um, of which almost these nine years were basically in, uh, you know, spent waiting for prices to break up. And, you know, this isn't even factoring in inflation. Meanwhile, Bitcoin is up 804%. If you look at his Bitcoin chart in the same kind of time frame that that was there. So not bashing gold at all. I mean, I love gold. I own, I own a little bit, but, uh, and silver. And, but, you know, at the end of the day, a five-year-old can see how obvious, um, see the obvious winner here is definitely BTC. So I'd like to go and show you this uh, very interesting video that we, that we have. Um, and how does it get value? Paper money has value. Sorry, guys. I'd like to show you this video here. Pre what it is that I'm going to show you um, as a debate between Natalie Brunel and Peter Schiff. The two have never met or never spoken previously, but uh, this was the first time. And uh, I don't know. I'd love to hear what you guys think. Did she crush him? Did she leave him dry? I mean, I must say they both prove good points and valid points. Um, you know, I'll I'll point out something to you when Peter Schiff does, uh, which I do agree with. But that doesn't mean that Bitcoin isn't the best. And I've just showed you uh, eight hundred and four percent in the same time frame that you know gold is up twenty six point four percent. Even I'm up more in my Bitcoin in the last four years than gold has been up. And guys, you know, going back, I mean, this channel's been out for four years. But I've been trading gold for 15 years, about 15 years, and I took a break uh, from trading gold because when we took that huge dip in gold, that nine-year dip that Crypto Zombie was talking about, you guys, I mean, it's ridiculous. That is hardcore, heavy manipulation through currency manipulation, and that is why Bitcoin continues to ride up because it is a hedge against inflation. It is a hedge against, uh, you know, the Federal Reserves around the world's printing money and degrading and devaluing your money, your paper money. Uh, so, which makes it harder for you to work, which, you know, very interesting. Um, at my, uh, at my uh, one office yesterday, the maintenance guy, you know, he's such a, he's such a good gent, but he's must be like, he's like 75 or 78 years old, even, even a bit older. But he's still quite young at heart. He still climbs up crazy ladders. But to cut a long story short, you know, yesterday I spoke to him and I said, well, you know, and just in plain, simple language, when you're working, you are giving your time away as your value to something or somebody else. So you need to make sure that that reward is much higher than the spent energy of your time, because you can never get your time back, but you can get money back. Okay, and you can get almost anything back that doesn't die or pass on. Okay, so make sure to make the most of everything around you that is living and that you do love, okay, and appreciate and make sure that you appreciate it more than anything else. And, you know, just accumulate Bitcoin while you do that, because I can tell you, this will give you that freedom with time. Okay to be able to have exactly what I've just said, you will get your time back. Okay, and that's what makes Bitcoin so powerful. So let's go and check out this new uh, Kraken. I showed you one from base in my video the, uh, this this other day here. I showed you a video from base that uh, was released the other day. But Kraken releases a new Bitcoin commercial leading up to the halving, listen to this. So what is money and how does it get value? Paper money has value because someone says so. 
Bitcoin is different. It's like digital gold. It has value for many of the reasons gold does, but that's only the start. Gold originally had value because it was scarce, but no one knows how much is left to dig up. Bitcoin, on the other hand, has a limited supply, 21 million, and it can never be counterfeited. Every day, more people are buying it, making it more scarce, making it more valuable. But you can also split it up because every Bitcoin is divisible by a lot. Each Bitcoin can be split into 100 million smaller units. So if one Bitcoin was worth $1 million, the smallest unit, called a Satoshi, would be worth one penny. So you can send whatever amount you want, and no one can stop you, because no central authority controls it. So unlike with banks and credit card companies, you don't need approval to use it, and no one can decide to just print more or shut it down. It puts the power back in all our hands. Bitcoin lets you control your finances. Kraken lets you buy Bitcoin. Kra so, I, I mean, I like Kraken. I, I don't really use them too much, but I like Kraken. I mean, there's, there's plenty of other exchanges, but Kraken has done some really great work in the space for the crypto space. And shout out to Bitcoin Magazine for sharing this article. And shout out to Kraken for um, this cool advert. I mean, that is an incredible advert, guys. And that's exactly what it is that I've just said. Um, and the real, um, you know, money is divisible. And Bitcoin is that. Money is tangible. And you can tang, you can use bitcoin to spread around the world you can use it as currency and you can use it as a means of exchange okay so not only that is that it's also portable money is portable and those are the that's a definition of money it must be tangible divisible and portable and those three things is exactly what bitcoin is and to top bitcoin off it's not like the american federal reserve um, or the other Federal Reserves where they literally just turn on a printer and print their, you know, print paper money into existence, which essentially is not paper money, guys. It's all digital money because if you come here and you look, all of these numbers are on computers now. They're not in, in, in the ether, in the cloud. Like, they're in the matrix. And that's why it's, money is not the most important thing. Time is your most important thing and how you use your time is very important. So I'll come show you guys. I was trying to show you this on my, on my live session the other day, my trade. Um, and what I did here, but it didn't quite uh, work because sometimes on my live sessions, I just it just seems like uh, there's not enough bandwidth on the computer or something like that. I don't know. I'll have to figure that out. But guys, the next thing that I want to show you is that, you know, often, you know, all of this crash that we're seeing at the moment, all of this geopolitical um, dramas and all of this kind of sideways movement here is the result of, you know, the announcements of war, I mean, and this was the announcement of war and a drop there, whoop de doo Like if we go back and we look at what happened, you know, um, during the, the COVID time, essentially what we can see is that, okay, there was a massive, massive, I mean, so this was announced, this wasn't even war, this was just a, you know, a pandemic, which we haven't seen in a long time. And that was a 63% um, absolute bloodshot. But there is nothing like that. Well, we don't know, but there is nothing like that at this point. But right now, guys, really, we've only done, and I mean, we're holding support here, like a simple 15, 20% dip already, guys. And we're holding strong. Like, this is just early. You're still early. Remember, in like five years' time, when Bitcoin's a million dollars and you've bought one Bitcoin at $63,000, like, you're $970,000 in profit over like five years. That is life changing money if you think about it. Um, you know, divide the profit by five years, that's nearly, it's like, call it around $210,000 uh, a year that you have to yourself. Like most. You know, people around the world can survive on living on 5,000 and some even less than that, guys. So you see what I'm saying? You can make bucket tons of money. So don't be afraid because even here, how the markets have reacted to wars and geopolitical events, 1926 to 2000, large cap stocks, small caps, long terms and inflation, all geopolitical events, one day fall, okay, of 1.2%, total drawdown of 5%. 22 days to the bottom and 47 days to recovery. So it takes time. I mean, look at this. This entire process here is like three months. Just, yeah, about three months. So it's very simple. Patience is the key to this game. And when there are down days and dip days, um, you know, and you see, you know, don't, I mean, you can DCI up, but I mean, buy this, buy this, buy that. That's what you want to buy. And every time you buy, 
when it pumps, you're up already. So the more you buy low, the more you weight your average price entry down. Now, Mr. JP Morgan. So this is the impact of geopolitics on markets it tends to be short lived. So this is a confirmation of what it is that I just showed you here from Endow US. Um, S&P and 500 around military invasions and conflict. Month of event equals 100. Beginning of the event, okay, is uh, zero. And the Arab-Israeli war, 1973. Um, and this is the average, guys. Look at this. This is the average. So 24 days, okay. Oh, sorry, number of months before and after the event started. So, you know, there's the downfall into the event. But once the event begins and it starts, and we've had the event for a while, that's why Bitcoin's already been pumping. But this starts to rally and, you know, then we start to make our way up and out. So I don't know about you, but the, the, the factual information is very obvious. And that's why I'd like to say to you that with the power of Bitcoin about to go mainstream, listen to what Anthony Pompliano has to say and listen to what the Fox presenter, the question that the Fox presenter is asking him here, because this is a very important question. And I really like this question. So let's have a listen here. Investments, Anthony Pompliano. Uh, we'll get to the tax selling and investment. I find that fascinating. But uh, we know one thing about Saturday night. Bitcoin offered zero safe haven. It tanked. I was watching it. Uh, how are people supposed to infer what Bitcoin can be best for during times of trouble? Yeah, this is a great uh, story, and I think something worth paying attention to. But the story actually starts with gold. So at the end of last week, gold started to hit an all-time high and was pushing up. And I actually wrote a letter on Friday to investors, and I said, hey, is gold actually signaling that a major geopolitical event could be occurring in the next few days? Mm -hmm. Saturday, we get the attack. And so who was buying gold? Was Iran buying gold? Was China buying gold? Why was gold going up a couple of days before? Is it a country who believed that there was going to be severe financial sanctions against their country, and so they wanted to protect their central bank assets? It's interesting. But of course, when the attacks actually occurred, Bitcoin did drop. But I think we can go back to 2020 and see why Bitcoin dropped over the weekend. In 2020, during COVID's kind of initial pandemic outbreak, all asset prices fell and correlations went to one. So it didn't matter if you were in stocks, bonds, Bitcoin or anything else. Everything dropped because investors were panicking. They had fear. And so naturally what they want is they want U.S. dollars in that situation. And so thankfully, the stock market was closed on Saturday and Bitcoin was really the only market that was trading. That's right. Because it price trades 24-7 for those. Of course. Them. So what was happening was people were scared, right? So what do they do? They sell liquid assets. and They want to raise dollars in order to be able to have those dollars and figure out what's going to happen. Now, what I do think is important, though, is that if Bitcoin leads... Before, he, before I carry on there, so the point that he's just said is they want liquid dollars. So they can use USDT and USDC as a stable coin in the crypto space to on the weekends where you can't do that in normal stocks and normal markets, you can do that in crypto because it is the only environment that trades 24 seven, 365 forever going forward. And this is the most powerful thing that has been invented guys. Um, and that has come out for us here because it doesn't stop trading. You don't have to lose money because geopolitical events you have sovereign freedom, okay? And that means you have the ability to make sure that you do not lose money and that you can store your cash in stable coins if that's what you cho so choose to desire, but that will protect your funds. It's on the way down in that panic moment, it will also lead on the way up in the coming days and weeks after people, I think, kind of get used to, okay, well, what is the current situation? They evaluate it. And they realize that the underlying fundamentals of these financial assets has not changed regardless of what's going on in the geopolitical kind of uh, environment. Let's talk about the halving event and tax. Okay, we're not going to talk about the halving event and taxes, but shout out to the Bitcoin Therapist, shout out to the Fox Live and Anthony Pompliano for that very awesome interview and video. I'd like to go and show you the next video that I have here, which is still from the Bitcoin Therapist and Tucker Carlson, but where Michael Saylor explains why fiat currency and inflation is the silent theft of your money. Now, you guys can see that I'm building up a story here for you before I actually show you the final blow to Peter Schiff and why gold, as good as an asset as it is, it is, and yes, it's been used for 5,000 years, but the new age technology is, is new things come into existence. And, and 
Bitcoin is that new age. Bitcoin is the new age digital gold asset. And yes, if all the internet and all the things had to switch off in the world, I, I doubt that's ever going to happen. Who knows? But I doubt that will ever happen. And essentially, that will transform uh, you know, crypto into what it, we're all expecting it to be. And if you guys believe that, you know what to do on the channel. And thank you for being here and watching my channel. If you are enjoying this, of course, you guys know what to do and truly appreciate that love and that care. Let's go and watch what uh, Mr. Michael Saylor has to say here. It's a short video. Most compelling case I've ever heard for the need for something like Bitcoin. So you're saying, just to make sure that everyone's following this, the whole point of Bitcoin is to escape the inflation vortex that has consumed all these previous empires. The point of Bitcoin is to fix the money. And money is energy and energy is life. And if I keep sucking the energy out of the economy, I'm sucking the oxygen out of your system. Either under the best case, you perform poorly. Under the worst case, I suffocate you to death or freeze you to death. That's the problem. That's why, it, that's why empires collapse. That's why economies collapse. And the problem, it's not just a problem for an individual. It's not just a problem for a family. It's a problem for every institution. It's a problem for every company. It's a problem for every city, every municipality, every government, every civilization. So right? you've made... Okay, and exactly to his point and what he's saying there, he may not be saying it as directly as I'm about to say it, but essentially the powers that be are in control of the financial system and the entire world and the economy they control everything so from your personal self to your family to your businesses to enterprises to institutions to governments to markets to banks to countries to the world they control it all how do you free yourself from that system Okay, and still operate within the premises of that system. Well, that is Bitcoin. Okay, just as it is and very simply put. Now, this is the very cool video from Peter Schiff. But before I carry on with Peter Schiff, I want to share that with you. Lastly, um, Israel Iran war fear suddenly spark a $500 billion Bitcoin and crypto price crash hitting Ethereum, BNB, XRP, Solana, and Dogecoin. It hit the entire crypto space. It did remove $500 billion dollars out of the crypto space um but blackrock hasn't blackrock wasn't selling blackrock was actually accumulating so all of east or all of asia as i've mentioned to you have just recently got all of their um bitcoin and uh spot bitcoin and spot uh ethereum etfs 1107 on the 17th guys i love that um just listed and now they are free and ready to trade so why would some of the others be de-risking upon the ideas of war? Well, because people fear. That's just the simple, simple thing. And that word is very powerful. And uh, be, the big whales, guys, make no mistake, are not the ones selling right now. Um, it's the custodians of the crypto. So the clients of these spot ETFs at BlackRock, Fidelity, etc. that are selling some of their monies because they're unsure and they'd prefer to hold dollars. Didn't I just explain that dollars are a death trap? Now, moving on to something about the SEC. The SEC breaks past policy guidelines in Uniswap crackdown. So listen to this, okay? So the US uh, SEC Wells Notice Against Uniswap raises questions about consistency in policy enforcement. Now listen to this, guys. To highlight just how outlandish the SEC proposed case against Uniswap is, it seemed worthwhile to look at how the SEC is contradicting years of its own policy guidelines across major points. Now, if you have a look here, but the SEC concluded that because the execution was on a separate system that matching routing communication and ordering as a computer service system did not meet the holistic definition of an exchange. Now, that's a bunch of rubbish because Uniswap is a novel application of the technology, but it follows the lines of decades of precedent in evolving our financial system to make more innovative methods of safe capital formation. Something historical SECs have been supportive of. So the exchange needed to involve the legal transfer of assets or finances. So even though a buyer on Uniswap may commit to purchase by signing a transaction with their private key, the Uniswap Labs front end wasn't settling, which they were. 
So in this case, the commission found that once again, so as long as the, the informational interface was no clearing and setting these transactions, then just because it was the primary listing location of an asset, it was somehow more of an exchange. So guys, you can see that the SEC are just, they, again, they continue to grasp at straws. I've been telling you this for like years now that the SEC are grasping at straws. It's the same as the Fed. It's the same as political agendas. It's the same as governmental agendas. It's all a bunch of smoke and mirrors. Okay, now moving on to this. To give you the last little bit of conviction before I show you my video on, or this video on Peter Schiff. Deutsche Bank survey. Other over half expect uh, crypto to become important asset class and payment method. So that's just, we're just talking about Deutsche Bank and Deutsche Bank customers. That's over half of them already, guys. We're only at 4% adoption in the world and there are 8 billion people and Deutsche Bank customers, yes, as they might be spread and big across the world, but make no mistake, this isn't just happening in Deutsche Bank. This is happening across all the banks and so many institutions. There's FOMO and they want to grab a piece of the pie by being able to be the middleman in the transaction between that, uh, the, the exchanges essentially and the OTP, OTCs and um, the banking institutions and the customer essentially. So um, before I do that, guys, please, if this video has been really awesome for you, make sure to smash the thumbs up and yeah, let me know what you think down below in the comments about everything that I've shared with you. I'd love to know what your ideas are and whether you think Bitcoin is going to go down or going to go up because right now, I, I just want to share this before I share the video. I did something very funny here, absolutely ridiculous, and I'll show you why. Um, but I took profits over here. Uh, I took 25% profits of my trade over here because essentially I could see this was a pump. We were, you know, we're chopping here and we couldn't get out of this. So for me, this was a signal to tell me that we were going to go further down. And luckily I did because then I didn't have, you know, I took profits and I didn't experience a continuation. Um, in the drawdown from this point, which ended up being a further kind of 15% drawdown. So essentially with a 15X, that's a 300% drawdown. So I don't really want a 300% drawdown, but what I did go and do is that I increased the margin on this particular trade, ridiculously so to an absolute DGEN 100X. Um, and the reason I did that is because I could see that this was bottoming out here again. This is, this is bottoming out guys, you can see it. We need to somehow push back up above this line here and get back up above this box. If we could do that, I'd be much more comfortable um, with that. If not, I will I will reduce this once again. But very simply, with four dollars, I've now managed. I mean, look at this. So when you do a hundred x, it reduces the amount of margin, but it also what it does is it um, so it gives you more liquidity to be able to use to go in more of a trade. But say for example, I had to make a five dollar trade right now it would bring my entry from where we are okay down here all the way up here and pretty much make it to where we are because i'm adding another five dollars so it would reduce and it would close my price so i'm leaving this at the moment on a five dollar position okay if we do drop and come down i will then only add more probably like 15 20 50 dollars 100 dollars to that position and then take that trade to the um to the upside okay so if that if that is the case that's what i'll do but if we kind of hover around here which is what i've been showing you that we possibly could do and get our way back up above here i think that we will eventually see some good moves now what i do want to share with you is on let's find you a nice clean chart here yeah let's use this chart here because this is the bitcoin us now uh so this is the coinbase let's go put it on the daily and i want to give us just very quickly our last indicators the emas the 20 the 50 the 100 and the 200 so very very simply we're under the 20 we're under the 50 we could pull down here one more time down to 59,000 to the same level there to meet our 100. If we are to go any further down, we could come essentially meet this level up here um, at about 52,000. Do I think we're going to go there? No, but 
I think we'll find some good strong support here on this 100 level, just like we found over here, just like we've taken a nice dip. I think we're going to start pulling up and this is going to start to pull all of these moving averages up and continue to make the next uh, kind of pattern up. Now, uh, Wednesday, that's not on Wednesday. We said this is on 18th, 19th, 20th, Friday, Saturday, the 20th. That's more or less where, where the halving is. So you can see we're coming up to that point. It's like a clock work right now guys hope you've enjoyed this i'm going to leave you alone now with the video make sure to use my bybit link down below It'll give you thirty thousand dollar deposit bonus up to and uh, my bitflex link will give you up to eighty eight thousand eight hundred eighty eight dollars and a um 128 000 combined it will give you 128 dollars bonus use those links down below go and trade check what it is that i'm doing and what it is that i'm showing you i'm just messing around here with this guys um, I'm actually using a lot more of my capital lately and my resources to buy these coins on spot and make the gains on spot is safer. Spot is just a lot more safer. Um, and you know, you get wicked out. If this was buy entry up here, I mean, I probably would have been wicked out yesterday. So, you know, you just got to be very cautious and careful, you know, as to how you, it is that you think your trading is. So, um, hope you enjoyed this video. I'm going to leave you here with this video and, uh, we'll hope to see you on the next one. You bless a bit of souls. Bitcoin is going much lower than this. If Natalie were smart, as soon as this segment is over, she would sell all of her Bitcoin. Because <laughs> if she doesn't sell it now, she's going to sell it later at a much lower all price. Right. Well, them's what we call fighting words. Uh, and I think they're similar drivers <laughs> for both. But let me introduce the two. Uh, Natalie, Natalie, meet Peter. Peter, meet Natalie. All right, Natalie, some choice words for you. What would you tell Peter? Oh, I know, Peter. And you know what? Bitcoiners don't feel the need to constantly <laughs> attack gold because we're not threatened by gold. And the reason that we have this failed fiat experiment that has impoverished our nation is because of the defects of gold. The fact that it's not easily portable, it's not easily verifiable, it doesn't offer instant final global settlement. And so you know what? Centralized authorities hijacked it, they papered over it, and we have a system of leverage and rehypothecation that hurts the working class. Bitcoin is immune to all of that. It is the savings account for billions of people that we really need and, and can most rely on and it offers that final global <laughs> settlement that we need and so gold is the analog version of sound money but bitcoin is the digital version and that's why it's going to be the faster horse yeah. in this race peter there's there, there's nothing sound about bitcoin it's losing the race right now take a look at your screen gold is up 25 26 dollars and bitcoin is getting clobbered you know there, there is no flaw in gold gold worked great for five thousand years the problem is the flaws with governments the flaws with human beings not with gold so so i agree with what he's stating here the problem isn't with gold so this and this is why this debate between gold and bitcoin and peter schiff and all the bitcoiners is completely futile because what peter schiff actually says there is that it's not the fault of gold or Bitcoin. It's actually the fault of human error, governments, greed, etc. in the space. That's what it is. And I agree. And if you guys agree, then you need to comment down below, please. Uh, but Bitcoin is, is really flawed because it doesn't have any actual value. Gold is the most useful metal on the periodic table. That's why it's money. Now it has great character. So gold is the most useful metal on the periodic table, no doubt. It's got medicinal value, so is silver, so is copper, so is a bunch of others. But it can be used as money and so can silver. And so, of course, can copper with copper coins and a whole bunch of others. But he's, he's, he's right in what he's saying there. But the distinguishing uh, argument or the continued debate between the difference between Bitcoin and, 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 and gold are irrelevant. And listen to what Natalie Brunel says when she comes up now. Characteristics that make it better money than other commodities, <laughs> but absent its intrinsic right. value, it, it couldn't be money. And Bitcoin has no intrinsic value. It's well, just a digital screen one second, of because, numbers. Because and any, all of this anything, is just a bunch of hype. Anything could be money, right? On the island of Yap, they used to have bit stone, uh, stone money. Anything could be money uh, if people uh, use it as an exchange. And this is the thing. But that's I, because they. But here's the thing, though. You have to no, admit, no. Bitcoin is on the rise. Wall Street has embraced it. Uh, and this is just a tiny speck. I mean, could you imagine? Could you imagine, Peter? At the rate of, of recognition, if Bitcoin keeps going at this rate, it's hard to deny it could go substantially higher. 
Now, I just told you it's been dropping for two and a half years. That's what it that it, what it's it made an all time peak. high recently. And I think that decline is going to accelerate. Uh, it, 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 it does not keep going up. They suckered in a bunch of people. Wall Street didn't embrace it. They're just trying to make a buck off it. I mean, these big Wall Street firms aren't <laughs> buying any Bitcoin with their own money. This is their customers' money that are dumb enough to buy it. They're just booking the. He, he's not wrong, but uh, I don't know how much of it he is right. He, it is the customer's money and they do want the Bitcoin. But it's very interesting because he, he, the fact is right, but I'm sure there is some Bitcoin, BlackRock Bitcoin money in there. Why would they not? Why would they want to be the biggest custodians of, yes, to make the most amount of money in fees? I, I hear you, but that doesn't mean that Bitcoin doesn't have a future. The bets, they're operating the casino. They're not at the blackjack tables the, and the, the roulette wheels. Natalie That's wants their to, customers that are doing that. Natalie wants to jump back in. You know, if you look at the short term, Bitcoin is going to be volatile. But if we zoom out, Bitcoin has outperformed gold. In fact, when Hamas attacked Israel, since then, Bitcoin is up 125 percent and gold is up only 27 percent. So let's really look at the numbers that we're seeing. And the best thing about Bitcoin is, again, no one controls the ledger, whereas gold is really vulnerable to centralization and top down control, which is why we need a system that Remember, is a neutral place I, to store your wealth. We need a neutral system now, and product. Even Bitcoin Peter, Peter, the why, can't someone own Bitcoin. Both? Why, why can't someone have exposure to both? <laughs> yeah, well, first of all, Bitcoin has outperformed everything. So don't compare it to gold. It's outperformed stocks, real estate, bonds, collectibles. That's because it's a gigantic bubble. No, if you want to own Bitcoin, I, I don't care. If you want to lose money in Bitcoin, go right ahead. It doesn't bother me. But I'm trying to help give people advice as to what to do with their money. And if they want to have an investment portfolio, Bitcoin has no part in it. But, you know, if you like gambling, if you want to take some of the money that you want, we're going to take to the racetracks or buy lottery tickets with or go to Vegas, if you want to take some of that money and gamble on Bitcoin or any of the other 20,000 cryptocurrencies that are out there, go right ahead. I mean, it doesn't bother me, but... I don't want to buy any Bitcoin. I mean, sure, had I bought Bitcoin years and years ago when I first learned about it, yeah, I could have made yeah, a lot of money yeah, selling yeah. it now you to could've. the greater fools, <laughs> right. but I didn't do that. That's something but he I'm said not gonna on make my show. He wishes he bought now. Bitcoin. Yeah, so, so Natalie, <laughs> bottom line, though, but is But I'm that... not going to buy it now. And yeah, Natalie, look. you're going to wish you sold Bitcoin. Mark my words. All right. You're going to you know, be ruined. You know, day. we, we, God, we, we take all of this stuff, If I'd only sold my Bitcoin, I'd have had a lot of money. we got 30 seconds left. i got to give Natalie the last word. I think I'm... I think the American dream has really been hijacked. We we tried gold. It didn't work. It was papered over. That system has failed the American people. And Bitcoin does provide hope for us, the working class. We want to be able to work for something that has to be measured by a free market so that we can see real value emerge as opposed to being captured by politics and bureaucracy, which ultimately is a system that benefits the few at the at the expense of everyone else. And it's a system in which the politically connected and the special interest groups really are at the right. top and so we need a system that is yeah. for Natalie. the people bitcoin is for the people exactly what it is that i was just describing to you throughout this video and that i previously described to you before thank you for being here with me today on the crypto bliss channel i truly hope you appreciated this video and this effort that went into this video if you did much love let me know down in the comments below i'll see you later